What's going on, y'all? This is your boy, Scott, by Nature TV, and we're here for a brand new episode of Yes for the Mess. No, I am not on screen because I, it's like 1.07 in the morning. I had like a four-hour nap because I had my whole day planned. I said, you know what? Well, when I get off of work today, I'm going to go home. I'm going to eat. I'm going to finish packing for my Chicago trip. I'm going to do my videos for um, Friday, and then I'm going to bed. Child, when I got home from work and the damn barbershop, honey, I had um got home. I ate, and I laid down for a second. I was watching um, T's live earlier and fell asleep as I was watching. And when I woke up, it was 11 o'clock, and I'm like, not be waking up four hours later. Oh my God. So I'm up at one o'clock in the morning. My flight leaves at nine. I plan on getting up in about five hours so I can be there in time for boarding and everything, every damn thing else. So I'm up at one oh eight making my videos. Okay. So yes, I love y'all just that much. <laughs> Yeah, I got a busy day ahead of me, so I said, let me go ahead and do these videos real quick. Real quick, um, one's gonna be like a super size yes for the mess, and the last one will be like a yes for the mess short. So it won't be that long. But yeah, before we get into today's mess, though, let me go ahead and let you guys know what's coming up now. Boys Night Out will be airing on Saturday night at ten nine Central. That is ten nine Central. It's gonna be a little bit late. You know what I'm saying? Jamar had to film next Friday. Has to film next Friday, which was the original day for us to air. So, but so we can have all five of us return for the first show. We pushed it back to Saturday night. So it's going to be next Saturday at 10, 9 central right here on Scotted by Nature TV. We have a great show ahead of us. Um, we've been um, planning for this. We've been gone since April and now we're back for a hot boy summer. And um, yes, it will be a 10 episode season as as were the other two. And yes, we are ready, honey. We are ready. New, new everything. OK, same players, new show. All right. So be on the lookout for Boys Night Out. This, um, not this Saturday, but next Saturday at 10, 9 Central, okay? So with that being said, you guys, let's go ahead and get into the mess for today, honey. We got like four topics to speak on. So let's go ahead and get into this one. Now, this one, um, this comes from TMZ, okay? The first one is from TMZ. And um, we're talking about Brittany Griner, okay? I think, I think I said her name right. And she was sentenced to nine years in a Russian prison and joe biden um has slammed the ruling okay that's what it was so in so many words um a russian um what was it a russian judge um had announced that britney was found guilty with the charges that was against her and um after that, um, she was sentenced to like nine years behind bars. She was also slapped with a $1 million fine and that she would have the opportunity to appeal. And But, you know, the likelihood of it all is that Brittany won't serve the entire sentence. Um, U.S. and Russian officials have all been negotiating a prisoner swap that will reportedly, you know, include Russian arms dealer, the nickname the Merchant of Death. You know, um, Joe Biden also spoke out against it and said, you know, um, he felt like the, the sentence was unacceptable. He was vowing to do everything in his power to get Britney home. And he said, I call on Russia to release her immediately so she can be with her wife, loved ones, friends and teammates. Biden said that in a statement released by the White House on Thursday. My administration will continue to work tirelessly and pursue every possible avenue to bring Britney and Paul um, Whalen home safely as soon as possible. Okay. Um, not only that, you know, Brittany was pretty emotional, you know, in court on today. You know, she was apologizing for the mistake that she made while she was pleading with the judge to hand down a life sentence. And, um, you know, she was issued, you know, she basically she had drugs on her pretty much, you know. And um, she was telling um, the courtroom that she was deeply sorry for packing the, um, the oil and the luggage back in mid-February. She was apologizing to her teammates, to a club, to the fans to the people in the country, you know what I mean? For the mistake and the embarrassment that she brought on them and that she wants to apologize to her parents, her siblings, the Phoenix Mercury organization back at home, the amazing women of the WNBA, as well as her wife back at home. Now, also, y'all, according to the Associate Press reporters on the scene, Brittany was wearing a gray T-shirt and dark pants and appeared to be very emotional while saying that she was sorry. And then she later urged the judge to take it easy on her when her sentence was eventually hit, um, handed down. She hopes that the ruling doesn't end her life. 
But prosecutors recent reportedly argued in the courtroom that Brittany did intentionally bring the cannabis oil and urged the, ju- the judge to sentence the 31 year old to a 9.5 years behind bars. They also reportedly argued that Brittany should be hit with a big fine and all of that other stuff. So that's pretty much what happened. My thing is, um, here's my thing. I do agree with the term, you do the crime, you do the time. Okay. And I know that countries have different types of laws. So we really can't tell people what to do in their, in their own, uh, in their own, and you can't you can't really tell people what to do in their own country. You know, some people have, you know, um, some people have um, some countries have different laws. But you know, I, I do feel like that that entire um, judgment was pretty harsh. You know, I can understand maybe a year or two, but you know, there are, there's people that you know do SAs on people. And they get less time. You know what I mean? And I and sometimes for me, I be looking at these charges and I be looking at these, um, you know, these sentencings and stuff like that. And it's just like for me, like some people go to jail for like drugs or selling drugs and they be sentenced to like 100 years in jail. But then you have people that have literally, you know, um, committed acts of violence against somebody and they get less time than someone that sold weed or something like that. You know what I'm saying? So that's just me. I know some people may disagree with me on that, but that's just the way I feel about the situation. Honestly, I feel that way because I just, I, I just, I do feel like sometimes it's unfair. And you know, when I say stuff like this, it's not me saying that they don't need to get no time at all because of course they need to get some time. You know what I mean? You got to get, you know, if you do the crime, you got to do the time, you know what I'm saying? So definitely, but but I do feel like some things get more time than other things. And and it shouldn't even be like that. But all I can say is I feel bad for her. You know, um, I hate that she got to do that much time. But, um, you know, you just got to do your bid. Really, that's really what it is. You just got to do your bid. You got to stay strong, you know. And that's just that on that, you know. You got to do your bid and you got to... Take it however it comes. That's how I feel about it. You know, although it was a little harsh, it definitely was a little harsh. That that whole sentence was a little harsh, child. I ain't going to sit up here and hold you on that. But you know it is what it is. You just got to do what you got to do. You got to do that time. You got to come out strong. That's pretty much it. So my prayers go out to Brittany. My prayers go out to her family, her teammates, her wife, everybody that loves her because she got a long road ahead of her. So shout out to Brittany. So we're going to go on to the next um to the next batch of mess, and that is Monica Lewinsky and Beyonce. Now, y'all know that Beyonce has been a topic of discussion ever since her album dropped. You know, she's been a topic of discussion. You know, Khalees has went at her, and now, you know, after Beyonce has removed a little milkshake sample out of her record, now Monica Lewinsky wants Beyonce to remove a lyric about her from Partition, a song that came out like nine years ago. So um, this is what was said, and this comes from um, CNN.com, okay? Now, once Beyonce, once it came out in the news and in the blogs that Beyonce, you know, edited her lyrics from some, edited a lyric from some song that she did and then took out, you know, the the sample from Khaleesi's, um, well, from her record that, you know, included Khaleesi's milkshake. Monica Lewinsky, who is best known for being the White House intern who was in a sex scandal with Bill Clinton back in the 1990s, she tweeted the news of Beyonce uh, removing a slur from her song Heated on her new album. And then she tweeted saying, "Um, while we're at it, hashtag partition. Okay, now if you guys don't know, like I said, Partition is a song from Beyonce's album, which was her self-titled album, and it came out in 2013, which was nine years ago. And in the song, Beyonce sings about a man, Monica Lewinsky, all on my gown, okay? Now everybody knows that the affair that happened between Monica Lewinsky when she was 22 years old, it happened between her and Bill Clinton, and it eventually led to Bill Clinton's impeachment back in 98, and much discussion about consent and abuse of power. Now... In 2021, Lewinsky had told CNN's Jake Taper that what's really important to remember in today's world is that we should never 
we should have never even gotten into a place where consent was was a question. Was it inappropriate as the most powerful man? My boss, 49 years old, I was 22, literally just out of college. And I think that the power, um, think the power, think the powers there are something that I couldn't ever fathom um, consequences at 22 that I understand obviously so differently at 48. Now, um, this week, Beyonce agreed to scrub her track, heated a reference, which is considered to demeaning people with, um, uh, how do you pronounce that? I, Several plats, uh, uh, I know it's a plassy. Let me just say that after that was a public outcry. Now, CNN um, reached out to the reps for the singer for, for the comment on Lewinsky's request. My thing with Monica Lewinsky is, girl, grow up and get over it. Now, let me tell y'all something. I'm not even no Beyonce fan like that. Let's make let's let's be let's be all the way clear about it. I'm not no Beyonce fan like that, but you wait till now to sit up here and talk about um she need to take your name out of a song or change the lyrics and all this other crap. Girl, bye. Like you will always be referenced for you know, sleeping with Bill Clinton. You're going to always be referenced for that. And that's something you're going to have to live with. Didn't nobody tell you to get on your knees and suck that man dick? Didn't nobody tell you to do that? You decided to do that shit. You decided to, to do that. So it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? And I don't, you know, and I was pretty young when all of that happened. So I don't know all of the details. But all I know is that you was involved in a scandal. Your name was all over the place back then you know back in 98 i was nine so your name was all over the place everybody was talking about you you know what i'm saying so it's just like girl like it's it's always going to be referenced you know what i mean and if you had an issue with beyonce saying that in partition then why didn't you say that nine years ago when it came out let me tell you something when rosa parks didn't like what outcast said in the, in, in the song with her name in it you know she filed a lawsuit everybody know that she filed a damn lawsuit about that so i don't know why you decide to come out and say something now like what's the fucking point monica what's the point monica that's what i'm trying to figure out what is the point girl because <laughs> you're gonna always be referenced you know you're gonna always be referenced like fun like not funky i need but um french montana said um he did a line on Keisha Cole's you when he said, miss, uh, miss me with them same lines like Trump wife. You know what I mean? Like, we already know what he means by that. So it's just like, girl, people get referenced in songs all the time. You ain't the first and your damn show won't be the last. So if you don't get out of your feelings and, and all this other stuff, I don't even know what the fuck was your point of even doing it. Because ain't nobody finna remove shit. And you know ain't nobody finna remove shit. Monica? Like, girl, bye. You gonna forever be known for that. And that's just what it is. It's very unfortunate, but that's just what it is. So if you didn't say nothing nine years ago, then girl, hush. <laughs> that's how I feel about it, y'all. But we're gonna move on to the next thing, because since Beyonce is still a topic of discussion, she's also a topic of discussion on this one. Now, as you guys already know, we got T.S. Madison and we got Kaya Motormouth, okay? Now, everybody knows the history between these two ladies, okay? They were both a part of the Queen's Court um, a couple of years back. They had a nasty, nasty, nasty falling out after the um, interview that they was about to do with Monique and every damn thing else, and now it's been an all-out war ever since now beyonce has featured t.s madison on one of her records and um kaya came out and um did a guy go to let's talk about the order about the album and she talked about um she said a couple of things about t.s madison which made t.s madison um herself respond to what kaya had to say about her now what we're going to do is we're going to play what kaya said first and then we're going to go into what um t.s madison said so y'all already know how we're going to do this all right, now let's go into what Miss Girl had to say. Okay, let's get into it. This is trying to put a spell on everybody in the world, including the children, with this tired ass album. You know, we've been on lockdown for three damn years, and it's all you could come up with the whole say. The man, the man, hard skin. A kilo Ali stolen sample. A Lee stolen sample. Ah, these are indeed the last days. Let's talk about it. Oh, Tina, you knew better, gag order. We the people say you better go kill another goat because this isn't working. Sacrificing for what, gag order? Because it ain't working, bitch. Matthew gone, Jay Z gone, the album flopped. Sacrifices for what? Killing my poor goats and pigeons. 
the wife they're gonna be gone next because she's sick of y'all if y'all don't see the devil is outside and in disguise living through be Jose, I don't know. Y'all don't see the devil is outside and all his children is running around thinking they stars. I don't know. Crawling on all floors, people from under the floors looking like somebody from the Bolter guy. All you guys is cursed and y'all think these man whores and mutants is stop. But I'm the bitch that's looking for clock. I'm under the bed. I ain't but I'm I'm minding my own fucking business, staying close to the Lord. Know who I am, God, okay, God. <laughs> Evidently, y'all don't. I was talking about in the church and doing tired ass collab over porn hard. Now, who's listening to the Jose anyway? Zaya and her daddy. Nobody. Oh, Eva Creole hold on stole from everybody, baby. Now, Jay Z must have just left you in the studio by yourself with no guidance so he could go fuck on the mother hole. Who he? Everybody, baby. Which I have you been to the doctor and did you? This is the case of I've been told these and all you rest of you whores and niggas that these thieves and rogues. I said that a long time ago. I guess when Khalees said it, it sounded a little better than when I tell the truth, huh? All right, so that was Kaya talking about Beyonce, and she made a couple of comments about um, T.S. Madison. Now, we're about to go ahead and get into what T.S. Madison had to say, and I saw this a little earlier today. Now, honey, okay, T.S. Madison went the hell in on Kaya. She read her for points, baby. And all I got to say is, listen. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, girl. All I gotta say is this: every time Kaya comes from T.S. Madison, T.S. Madison doesn't always respond. I can give you that. She don't always respond, but when she does respond, baby, she responds. Okay, that's one thing I do know. When she responds, she responds, and she gave a pretty decent response. Not even a pretty decent response. She just pretty much read her for points, which is what she needed to do any day, any any damn way. Oop, I'm sorry. She get she read it for points any damn way, which is what she needed to do. Because my thing, I'm a, I'm gonna wait for my final um synopsis of this. <laughs> until after we play T.S. Madison's part. So let's go ahead and listen to what T.S. Madison had to say in regards to Kaya. Let's listen to it, honey. And I heard a raggedy bitch who ain't, who ain't peaked since 1987 has so much negative shit to say about that woman's album, How It's Devil Worth. Bitch, you got holes out here talking about arthritis, taking arthritis pills now because they neck and they back is hurting. <laughs> you the same bitch that got a motherfucker bitch out here taking Dome's back pills. They, they, they and got hoes at the chiropractor right now. <laughs> and the same motherfucking hoe who got a porn whore on your shit. Ooh. I'm the same porn whore on Ned Scholar, bitch. The same one. Why don't you delete it? I damn sure took that shit down when we had to get. I snatched that shit off of all services, all streaming services, bitch. I pulled that motherfucking shit down. I won't have nothing to do with you, puss ass fucking hoe. Nothing. I don't be in no space, occupying no space, talking about that rabbit ass mother, that rabbit dog motherfucking goddamn foaming at the mouth motherfucking hoe. Nowhere. I don't know what be nowhere in the place talking about that hoe. I don't say nothing nasty about that hoe because I don't give a fuck about that hoe. And you know, bitch, out your mouth. And the only reason why that you was laying that woman's album out, it was because I'm on that album. But bitch, guess what? Thank you for streaming Cozy, bitch. <laughs> Thank you. That won't be the last time she streamed it. Thank you for streaming Cozy, bitch. I don't talk about that hoe. I don't read that hoe. It's so much that I could read that hoe into an oblivion. Y'all think that whole mouth is the fool, bitch. I can read that hoe into an oblivion. So it's that labor about the car. I can read that hoe until that bitch finally go down there to a chiropractor. 
and lay on the table. I don't. Shit pop up by that hole. I don't say nothing. About All right. And that was T.S. Madison's response in regards to Kaya speaking on her, Beyonce, and the song that they did together, Kyle Cozy. Okay. Now, this is what I got to say about that situation right there. Okay, first of all, if we all been following Kaya for years, you know, I ain't really been following her ass. You know, I just, you know, I just talk about the order. <laughs> That's all I do is talk about the order. So I don't really follow Kaya. You know, a lot of the times I have to talk about her, but I don't really follow her. But if you know Kaya, y'all know that she don't let shit go. She's a Scorpio to her soul. She's not going to let nothing go. And, you know, this whole little situation went down between her and T.S. Madison a long damn time ago. Like, they fell out when, what, 20, what, 17, 2018, somewhere around that time? You know, I, I don't even think I was 30 yet when it happened. I was still in my 20s when that shit went down. Here I am, 33. My thing about the situation is... I, I just don't understand why this is still a thing now. You know what I mean? And, uh, and you know, people be going up for Kaya. You know what I mean? Like, people, the same way people go up for little Boosie. Like, Boosie is pretty much equivalent to what Kaya is. Like, you know, they like to get up on social media platforms and pop shit on every damn body else. And then when others respond or have something to say about it, it's, well, y'all mad about the real, y'all mad about this, y'all mad about that. When people like me speak the real all the time and y'all be pissed off about that, but y'all give motherfuckers like Kaya and Boosie Grace when they always saying something malicious and negative about somebody. When the shit that I say really don't be malicious, but y'all be mad at me though, but when it's Kaya or Boosie and you know they being malicious, y'all don't give a damn. That's the part I don't fucking understand. But child, it is what it is. I probably never damn understand. And it's okay. It's okay. I just won't uh, fucking understand. It's just, it's it's okay. It is fine. But my thing is, why do you always come at T.S. Madison? And, you know, I've had my words about T.S. Madison. I haven't always, you know, agreed with the things that she said or done or whatever. But at the end of it all, it just looked like you mad. And, you know, T.S. Madison has continue to thrive from the moment y'all broke up and sometimes it's best you know sometimes you understand you sometimes when you get away from certain people you tend to grow a little bit and um i'm beginning to learn this shit my damn self you know sometimes when you when you we you break away from certain people certain energies you tend to grow in your own way especially for me because i've broken apart from people and it took me a long time to really sit down and think about the things that i wanted to do and i'm around people that really support me and i'm around people that really um help inspire me they embrace me they give me the energy that i need to keep it pushing you know because there was a time where i was around people that did not want to see me succeed they wanted me to be up under their damn thumb and you know sometimes when they see you thriving and when they see you doing things that you want to do and seeing you you know constantly moving forward in life they can't seem to handle that and come and to me Kaya is a talented woman. No matter what my opinions are of her, I do think that she's very talented. She writes, she sings, she produces. She could be way further off than she is, but instead she decides to be where she at. And it just comes across like she's bitter as hell because her life isn't where she needs it to be or where she wants it to be because T.S. Madison continues to do big things. She continues to do big things. She continues to be seen. She got. She has a reality show, a show on Fox. So like she, she's, she's grinding. Now she's on Beyonce's album. There's something huge. There's something very huge. And you know, I, I see that. And I'd be like, girl, do your thug thizzle. Keep doing your thug thizzle. That's what you're supposed to do. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, sometimes when you're around folks, you don't even realize how complacent and how stagnant you become when you are around certain people. And I learned that. I learned that. You know, um, it's it's crazy to me. You know, it's funny how when you come up, when you get away from people that really never meant you no good in the first place, and when you finally get away from them, you start succeeding in life. 
I definitely understand it. So I see that from T.S. Madison's point of view. And I understand what she means. Like sometimes you can ignore somebody and you can ignore somebody and you can ignore somebody and you can ignore all the bullshit that they do and all of this other stuff. Like you can do that. But in the same breath, it's kind of like, you know, the you know, you can only ignore things for so long. So when you finally have had enough of shit, it'd be like, okay, look, bitch. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because I've had that happen to me. Like I remember one time, it was some situations going on with me and you know, it was, I was just like, I don't even have an issue with, with certain people. And I just don't understand why they act like they got one with me. And I can only ignore things for so long. Like I'll pay it, you know, like I pay it does. I do this. I do that. Like I take the high road, but then when it gets too much, I'd be like, okay, bitch, uh, it's time for me to confront your ass. Like, let me ask you what your motherfucking deal is. You know what I'm saying? That's just the type of person that I am. I've always been that way. Like, you know, it's nothing for me to confront somebody when I need to find an answer because, like, I don't bother nobody and I don't really be coming for nobody. I be in my own little world. I rock with who I, who the fuck I rock with. You know what I'm saying? So when people be trying to come at me crazy, you know, I I really be paying people dust, honestly. Like, there are people out there right now that has come for me, that have talked about my platform, that have said things, slick shit about my platform, you know, and... I ain't saying nothing about it for what these people don't know me. They ain't never had no conversation with me, but they talking about my platform. They talking about my platform. Like they're trying to shit on the things that I've done already, you know, on my growing platform. You know what I mean? And I'm saying this in the most humblest way. You know what I'm saying? So people will try to find any reason, any reason to try to dim your light when your light is shining brighter than they anticipated it because i just felt like when kaya and t.s madison broke up i feel like kaya really felt like t.s madison wasn't going to make it without her and i think it's killing her right now to see that t.s madison is definitely making it without her and your best revenge is your paper and sometimes also your best revenge is your success and t.s madison i gotta do shit to kaya but continue to smile continue to succeed and continue to grow in this business so shout out to t.s madison and shout out to Kaya, child, because she's going to forever be where she's at. Complacent! Let's get to the last um, batch of mess of the day, and that is these two people, um, Neo and Miss uh, Crystal, Miss Diamond and the Rough Child. You know, they've been in the news this week because, you know, Crystal put Neo out on blast and shit like that, and everybody has had some things to say about the situation. Everybody has had some things to say about the situation, okay? So this is what she said. Now, she done came out um today around 11 um, 42 pacific on tmz and now she's filed for divorce and she said that he had another child with another woman okay so y'all know that i've um trying to i've held back on reading articles but i'm gonna read this one so just uh just sit back so um well i'm not gonna read the whole thing i'm just gonna summarize i ain't no need for me to read all this shit Crystal is putting an end, you know, to the marriage. She's filing for divorce and she's claiming that Neo recently fathered a child with another woman. Now, her name is Crystal Renee. She married Neo in February of 2016 and she filed um, divorce documents earlier this week in Atlanta saying that the couple's marriages is um, broken with no hope for reconciliation. But what's more shocking is that Smith says that she and Neo got three children together of their own and he recently fathered a child with another woman. Um Crystal says that the couple's date of separation was July the 22nd, 2022, and she's been taking care of the three kids ever since the split. Now, she's asking for primary physical custody of the kids and joint legal custody of the kids, and she's also asking for child support and alimony. Neo and Crystal have had their ups and downs over the years. You know, she filed for divorce back in 2020, but later withdrew her petition. And, you know, TMZ broke the story and the two celebrated their love again in 2022 in Vegas with the second wedding. But something tells us that there won't be a third. It tells all of us that it won't be a third. Um, ain't really no need for me to stay on this story for a long time because I'm only going to repeat and regurgitate what I've already said. You feel in some type of way, you know what I'm saying, just because of the fact that not really you feeling some type of way, but it's like, it's never fun when the rabbit got the gun. That's really the truth. It's never fun when the damn rabbit got the damn gun. It's never. 
period. Only because of the fact that you sat up there and you held a smear campaign against Monietta Shaw. When she came out and spoke about what happened to her, you said it never happened. You defended Neo Tooth and Nail, and I get it. That's your husband. I understand. But what these girls got to understand is just because that's your husband, it don't mean that you're supposed to come out and say shit. You don't, you cannot denounce another woman's uh, past. You just can't. You can't denounce another woman's experience. Just because your experience with this man was a certain type of way, that don't mean that is that is going like that didn't happen to somebody else just because your experience was different. You know what I'm saying? That's just how I feel about it. Like, yeah, Neo probably was a good man to you. But he wasn't a good man to Monietta. And you had the nerve to get your ass out here and feel like you can get out here and, and, and say whatever you want to say about this girl. But like I said, how you get them is how you fucking lose them. That's just what it is. How you got them is how you lost them. And, you know, I hate it when women get with these dog ass niggas and then try to shit on the next woman, the woman before them, and try to make it seem like they don't know what the fuck they're talking about. Oh, they know because they had them before you. So now you're divorcing him. Now you're asking for, for, for physical custody of the child, legal joint custody. Now you're asking for child support and alimony. And Neo, listen, if you're going to be a whore, be one, but don't get married. That's what I don't understand about these men. You, you want to be whores, but you still want to go out and get married to somebody and then go home and lay up with your wife after you and lay up with about... <laughs> 20, 30 other women. That shit don't that that shit has never made any sense to me. It don't probably never make no sense to me. But girl, no. Uh-uh. Crystal, you can move on with your life. And Neo, stop, stop, stop fucking around. You know, and don't get married again. Don't get married again. Cause it's pretty clear that your ass is not monogamous and you don't want to be no one woman man. Like Dave Houser said. You don't want to do that. You want to be a whore. So go out and do that. That's the only thing that I could tell you. So with that being said, y'all, I ain't really got nothing else to say about Crystal and Neo. All I got to say is best wishes to both of y'all, but what goes around comes around. And that's all I got to say about that. So with that being said, y'all, this be your boy, Scott about Nation TV. Be sure to like, rate, comment, subscribe, and share this video, okay? And also, if you want to follow me on any form of social media, just go ahead and follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. All of those accounts will be in the description box down below. And um, I'm out here, you guys. Until next time, I will holler and I leave you guys with a promo from Nova Cosmetics. I'm out of here, you guys. Bye. <laughs>